In our previous videos, we have talked about everything After Effects, from definition, pricing and uses and everything in between. In today's video, we discuss an even more niche topic about the software. Is it good for 2D animation? Without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Far from After Effects itself, when it comes to 2D animation specifically, we have two main types frame-by-frame -frame animation made entirely digitally and frame-by-frame -frame animation made traditionally but processed digitally. They are similar but differ slightly. Frame-by-frame -frame animation made digitally. This type is basic frame-by-frame -frame animation made entirely digitally, from storyboarding to visual effects. Each one of these is a, um, is a frame. And so I do actually draw that in Photoshop. And so if I go into wind, uh, working thing. You can see I've just got this. Shoo, shoo, shoo. So I'm just going to take that and I'm going to put it inside of my comp here. And let's add this a couple times. I'll stagger it somewhat. And uh, that'll just kind of whip by. So you can tell that the butterfly here was animated in After Effects just by rotating things and changing the position. For instance, 2014's Sioro O's Afternoon Class is a great example of animation made entirely digitally. Frame-by-frame -frame animation made traditionally but processed digitally. This type of frame-by-frame -frame animation is made traditionally for the most part, except it is processed digitally for an easier production and sometimes to add visual effects or other elements that weren't done traditionally. For instance, that can involve color for some animation. There is great variety and it depends on each project. For example, Studio Ghibli's 2001 Spirited Away is made mostly traditionally with some digital processing involved. The goal was to use the technology to help enhance the experience, but not completely rework it. After Effects and frame-by-frame -frame digital animation is a bit of a complicated story. The software is made for other purposes, so its main goal isn't 2D animation, but it can do it to some extent. It has a timeline and a pen tool that works similar to the one used in Photoshop and Illustrator. Keyframing is also an option and the most important tool in frame-by-frame -frame animation. I toggled down into the shape's path and keyframed that property. And then adjusted that shape every frame with our pen tool to match our Photoshop roughs. And I did this on almost every frame. It can add more information to a single frame, enhancing not only the speed of the movement, but also the movement path as well. Smears are just really fun to do. We end up with a composition here that is full of keyframes and it can look intimidating seeing it all like this, but it all follows a process building on each element that came before it gradually. It might seem like a lot of work to do this by animating so many frames individually, but this whole animation is only 20 frames long. Onion skinning is not present. However, it can be replaced by another feature, which is CC wide time. But then I'll drag CC wide time out onto the adjustment layer, and I immediately see some duplicates of my logo, kind of like the echo effect. Add a CC composite effect right after it. Now I can put any effects before this to modify just the trail. So if I wanted them to be brighter, I could add say a tint effect, and then I could add say maybe a curves effect right after that increase the brightness. So it's a simple effect, but you can combine it with other effects to create things that are a little bit more interesting. With all of those tools, digital frame-by-frame -frame animation is more than possible, especially if it isn't your focus and say you want to add a simple animated shape to your animated photo collage or what have you. This is fine, dandy and doable. However, if you're looking to make something like say this short 2D animation film, After Effects is not right for you. Like at all. You might be able to use it in post-production to add visual effects to make a scene more atmospheric, or to make the motion graphics needed for an intro to the movie or an outro. But relying on it solely to make this type of animation will not take you anywhere, or at the very least, be very hard. 
There are software that are much better equipped to handle this type of animation and that can even help you make the process a bit automatic if you wish, with rigging and puppet animation. For instance, we have Toon Boom Harmony, TV Paint, and Moho, to name a few. So make sure to consider this before investing your time and money in After Effects. Does frame by frame animation play a major role in what I want to do, or does it play a minor one? If you want to process your animation digitally, After Effects is and is not the thing you might be looking for. If by processing your animation digitally, you mean to add visual effects, adjust the overall color and atmosphere of your animation, or add animated squiggly lines, text and other motion graphics and compositing effects, After Effects can help you a lot. However, if you're entering your frames and timing them, or lining your sketches and wanting to color them, or any other variant that includes the early stages of an animation pre-production, After Effects simply does not have the tools you would need for these operations. You're actually better off using software that is better specialized in this domain, such as OpenTunes, for example. We have reached the end of our video. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new today. Make sure to check out our other videos in the series about After Effects for more information about the software. Comment below if you think that we've missed something or if you have any other suggestions. Thank you for watching as always and see you next time.